When you're first picking up a camera and starting out on the path to becoming a professional filmmaker, it is so easy to feel like success is never going to come. No one is watching what you make, directors and production companies won't return your calls, and it can seem like there is no end in sight. Unlike some more traditional jobs, there's no step-by-step -step rules for how to build your filmmaking career, and what worked for one person might not work for another. But if that sounds discouraging, don't worry. Almost all successful filmmaking careers that I know of follow a basically similar path. And that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. What to expect when you're first starting out, when you might realistically start bringing in some cash, how much time you need to invest, and then finally, I'll get into some tips and tricks to speed up the process that have worked for me. So let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back. And if you're new here, my name is Luke Forsyth, and on this channel, I teach the skills I've learned over 10 years working as a professional documentary filmmaker and photographer. Right off the bat, I think it's important to say that there is no silver bullet solution to how to build a successful filmmaking career. There are countless different ways to make it in this business, and sadly, you're not gonna be able to just copy the steps that someone else took and expect it to work for you in exactly the same way. No, God, please, no, no! Anyone who tells you they have a secret formula for succeeding quickly is lying to you. And I don't wanna mislead anyone into thinking that there is a fast or easy way to make this work. But the good news is that there are definitely things that pretty much every professional I know of have in common. And by applying those lessons to your own career, you'll have a much better chance of making it through. The best piece of advice I ever got when starting out on my documentary journey was from my photojournalism mentor. I'd spent the last two years as an English teacher in South Korea, and while I was there, I decided that I wanted to change directions and become a professional photojournalist. So I took all my savings, bought a used camera, and signed up for a workshop with one of my favorite photographers. On the first day, we were sitting in a restaurant in Dhaka, the capital of Bangladesh waiting to go out shooting when he told me something that was a bit hard to hear at the time, but has been one of the truest and most useful pieces of advice I've ever been given. And that was, don't start if you want it fast. Basically, he said that I should be looking at my career from a long-term perspective, and that I should be prepared to put in up to five years of work before I could expect to be really working full-time as a pro. Now, if I'm being honest, I found that pretty hard to hear. I'd spent a good chunk of my life savings on the workshop and camera, and hearing that I could be years away from accomplishing my goals was not what I wanted. I really had to stop and think about whether or not I was really prepared to wait that long, or if I wouldn't just be better off going back to my teaching job and its guaranteed paychecks. In some ways, it probably would have been a lot easier if I just packed it in then and went back to my job. But as you can probably tell from the fact I'm sitting here making this video, that's not what happened. I wanted a job that satisfied me creatively, that gave me permission to be out in the world exploring and where I could be my own boss. And that meant leaving security behind and jumping in with both feet. Over the course of the workshop, I realized that I really loved the process of documenting the world around me and that if there was any way to turn that into my job, it would be worth it even if it didn't happen fast. Ultimately, things did happen much faster for me than the five years I was expecting. But at the time, I didn't know that, and I still decided to go ahead. I spent a full year traveling through Asia while I built my first portfolio. And during that time, I made a grand total of zero dollars. I was so broke that after that trip, I had to go back to my job as a tree planter in Northern Canada to get some cash flow going again. But I stayed committed to the goal and I carried a camera with me every day. And then when the season was over and I had a bit of money in the bank, I moved to Cambodia where I started covering political protests and human rights issues for another six months or so, even though I was shooting six days a week and pitching and pitching like crazy, I made, you guessed it, nothing. I was running out of money again, and I was actually thinking I might have to go back for another season of tree planting when I caught a lucky break and got my photo published on the front page of the New York Times. After that, work started to slowly trickle in, and by the end of my second year, I was earning just enough to get by. And remember that I was living in Cambodia, which has a very low cost of living compared to other places, and I was still barely making it work. I actually made a full video about how that whole process went down, and I'll link to it somewhere up here. It was probably Probably another year after that until I was working enough to have some financial breathing room, which means that it was around two and a half years in total from when I first started to take work seriously to the point where I was living from it. Two and a half years is a long time, but for me it felt like I'd made it happen super fast 
Because I'd been expecting to work for at least five years, when things started to work out sooner than that, I felt like I was winning the game. Now, obviously photography and filmmaking are different, but if I'd been starting out as a filmmaker right from day one, the path would have been pretty much the same. Now that was what worked for me and it might not work for you and you might need the full five years to get to the same place. Or you could just as easily catch a break a lot sooner and find yourself working full time after just a year or even a few months if you're really lucky. But the point is that if you come into this game and by game, I mean this creative journey, whether that's photography, filmmaking, journalism or something else entirely, if you come into it thinking it's gonna happen quickly, you're in for a disappointment. It is going to take time, a lot of time. And the more prepared you are for that, the better you'll be able to weather the inevitable setbacks and challenges along the way. The people who really succeed in this business are the ones who stick around the longest. And the only way to absolutely guarantee that you won't make it is to quit. So settle in for the long haul and prepare to be pleasantly surprised if you're able to speed things up. If that sounds discouraging, I get it. It's way more sexy and exciting to hear that you can do things quickly, but I really want to make sure I'm giving you true advice on this channel and advice that's grounded in my own experience. And in my experience, careers with real staying power take time to build. Slow can be frustrating, but slow is good because it creates a strong foundation. You want to level up slowly and gradually so that you can actually learn the skills you need for the long term. And there's just no way to do that fast. People who go viral overnight might find that they get a ton of followers or clients very quickly, but then they fall apart because they don't have the bedrock skills they need to consistently put out good work when the shine wears off their viral hit. It doesn't make it any less frustrating to hear I know, but a slow and steady start will usually set you up for more long-term staying power, which is what you want in this business. Before before I move on to a few tips and tricks I found that might help you speed up the process a bit, I'll leave you with something else my mentor told me. He said, most people in this world spend at least 40 hours a week working at jobs that they hate. Why should you expect to work any less and have a job that you love? I've never forgotten that and I've repeated it to myself a million times when I find myself slogging through a tough assignment or sitting in front of a computer writing pitch emails instead of doing the fun stuff. Because it's so true, we're setting out to create a career for ourselves based on an art form that we feel passionate about when most people in the world have to do something they don't enjoy just to survive. That could mean sitting in a cubicle doing data entry for 40 years or standing on an assembly line until your knees and back barely work anymore. We want to make a living just by carrying a camera, which in the grand scheme of life in this world is a pretty cushy gig. It would be really arrogant to also expect that to happen fast. So put in the hours and brace for a long haul because any creative career worth having will take time. And in my opinion, this career is absolutely worth it. Okay, so you've made peace with the fact that it's going to take years of hard work to get where you want to go and you're not scared off, but you want to know if there's anything you can do to give yourself a competitive advantage and maybe stack the deck in your favor when it comes to catching a break. And the answer is yes. There are a few things that I've done that I credit for getting my career off the ground faster than expected, and they might work for you too. The first thing you might be able to do is control your your geographic location. By that I mean you can move somewhere where you stand out a little bit more. For me, one of the keys to my early success was that I was living in Cambodia where there were not that many English speaking photographers available. So when a newspaper or NGO was looking for someone to hire, there was a much shorter list of people to choose from than there would have been in London or LA for example. Now I'm not suggesting that you all pack up and move to Southeast Asia, but if you're lucky enough to have the freedom to move, moving could be worth looking into. Just like my photo career was built in Asia, my filmmaking career really took off in Mexico. I'm Canadian and the sad truth is that there are not a lot of high-end documentaries, at least not the kind I'm most interested in making, that are being shot at home. If I'd wanted to work in reality TV or something like that, I probably could have done just fine in Canada. $500 for the rest of the pizza. Take a little piece. But to get into the sort of gritty social documentary work that I wanted to, I had much more success being in a place like Mexico where they were actually shooting that kind of thing. Again, just because that worked for me doesn't mean that you should do the same thing. But thinking about where the work you want to do is actually being made and then moving yourself there is one way you can stand out a little faster. That doesn't have to be an international move or even a move to a big city. If you were interested in making outdoor adventure documentaries, I think you'd have a much better chance going to a place like Bozeman, Montana or Boulder, Colorado than you would in New York. Or if you're really passionate about documenting the ocean and marine life, then going to Paris won't do you much good. You need to identify where the 
work you want is being made and then plan a move that makes sense based on that. One final thing I'll say about moving is to do the world a favor and make sure that your motivations aren't just based on ambition and that you actually care about the topics you're relocating to cover. The last thing we really need are a bunch of people moving to Bangkok or Rio or wherever and driving all the prices up for the locals if these people aren't invested in the local issues and are only motivated by their own success. If you're not invested in the place you move to, you're not going to do good work anyway. So take a minute to think about it before you sell all your furniture and get a one-way ticket to Nairobi. I also know that a lot of people have families or responsibilities that make moving really tough and not everyone can just move to Cambodia on a whim. So before people get upset in the comments about how unrealistic moving is for them, just remember it's only one option to consider. If it doesn't make sense for you, that's all good. The next thing you can do has worked wonders for me, and it's probably more important than your geographic location, and that's to step up your networking game. The documentary filmmaking world isn't really that big when you get into it, and you'll find that a lot of people at the top know each other. It can seem daunting to break in, but once your name is being passed around those circles, you'll probably have more than enough work to keep you going. That means getting yourself in front of those people so they actually know who you are. And in the beginning, that means networking. Networking is one of those things that most creative people hate, but it's been so important for my career. The way I went about it is that when I was living in Mexico, I made a list of all the production companies who were making the shows I wanted to work on, then I figured out where they were located. I learned pretty fast that most of them had offices in New York, so that made sense as a place to start. I saved up some cash and set aside about a week to go there with the sole aim of meeting new people and expanding my network. I probably emailed about 50 or so people ahead of that trip, and while quite a few of them ignored me, probably about 10 or so agreed to meet with me. I scheduled a couple of meetings a day, usually just a casual coffee or a quick office drop by and introduced myself and what I did. When the week was over, I went back to Mexico without a single firm job offer and I wondered if I wasted my money. But within a few months, one of those people got in touch with a job that paid off the entire expense of the trip. And there's still a client to this day. I made it a point after that to do at least one trip like that a year. And now it's just a built-in cost of doing business for me. It might take a long time to see the results of your networking trips, but if you stick with it and are persistent without being annoying, it's one of the best ways to get your name out there and in the mix for work. I'm gonna make a more detailed video just on the ins and outs of networking soon because it's just that important, so stay tuned for that one. The last thing, and possibly the most powerful thing you can do to speed things up, is to create regularly and share your work publicly. There's a really great book by Austin Kleon called Share Your Work, and I'll link to it in the description, which is basically about the need for all artists of any sort to share their work if they want any chance of success. It doesn't matter if you're the most talented filmmaker this generation has ever produced, if people don't know what you're making, you won't get anywhere. In order to share your work, you'll have to make work, so the idea is tied up with practicing. Going out and experimenting and practicing, then sharing those results can be a really powerful way to make new connections. If I were starting out again as a documentary filmmaker, I'd do this by trying to make as many short films as I could, then posting them online or submitting them to film festivals. It could be even just a minute long or two minutes long and post it to YouTube or Vimeo or even TikTok, whatever. Just make work and put it in places where people can see it and you'll seriously increase your chances that people will come to you because they like your style and want the same thing for themselves. Your best shots aren't doing you any good trapped on your hard drive anyways, so get your work out there. All right, so that's it. My insights on what you should expect in terms of a career timeline and what you can do to speed things up a little. Those three things, uh, moving, networking, and sharing work have worked best for me in the past, but if you have any other tips, post them down below in the comments for everyone. There is no single way to make things work and everyone's career is different, but what they all have in common is time, practice, and dedication. Hope that video was helpful and that it gave you some ideas for how to approach the next stage of your own careers. If you liked that one, maybe think about subscribing to the channel so I know which videos to keep making for the future. And if you did enjoy it, maybe you'll like this other one I made about one of the first big career decisions filmmakers have to make. See ya.